Today we're taking a look at mistakes that all eScape builders need to avoid. What's up guys, welcome back to another electric skateboard video. My name is Mike Beard. I have been building electric skateboards for over three years now. and I have made quite a few mistakes throughout that entire process. And I just wanna share some of those mistakes with you guys so you don't make the same ones and you can save yourself some time, money, tears, you know, all that. So um, let's dive into a few of the mistakes that uh, you guys definitely need to avoid. The biggest mistake I see in new eScape builders are, are people who just don't quite do enough research. There's tons of videos and tons of forum posts all about electric skateboards and I just feel like some builders are very, very eager to get started but don't quite do enough video watching or enough forum post reading and it, and it leads them to, be, to buy parts that aren't necessarily compatible. For example, buying a ABEX style wheel pulley but you have a set of Kegel wheels. I see that all the time and it's just a pain to have to swap those out or get, or get a return started. Um, also, getting a maybe 10S ESC with your 6S battery, that doesn't really quite work. Uh, if you have the wrong voltage on your ESC, that could lead to um, issues with your range. Your range might not be what you expect. Your speed might, might not be what you expect. And also, it may discharge your battery way lower than uh, is safe for that battery and causing damage to it. So you definitely want to avoid that as well. Another item that people buy wrong a lot is their motor pulley. Uh, a lot of times people don't pay attention to what size motor shaft they have on their motor. Um, most motors in the electric skateboard world use eight millimeter uh, diameter shafts on their motors. Um, a few of them are 10 though. So what happens a lot of times is uh, somebody might buy a motor with a 10 millimeter shaft and then they get an eight millimeter uh, diameter pulley and then obviously eight millimeter is too small to fit over a 10 millimeter shaft. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're taking the extra minute to figure out what size shaft you have on your motor and then buying the proper motor pulley. Cause it is just such a pain to send things back, especially as something as silly as this. So take the extra minute, double check what size you have and buy it the first time correctly. Now there are a lot more parts that are not compatible with each other, but nine times out of 10, if we have to uh, get your return started for a customer who bought the wrong parts. It's one of those parts just because you know a lot of those things are little small details that people aren't necessarily paying attention to but hopefully this video makes you read that extra line item in the description. Make sure you compare all your parts making sure that everything is bought compatible the first time. <laughs> one huge thing that I see all the time is with people who are trying to get their build started and they send us a list of their parts and throughout the lists I'm reading a lot of upgrades that people think they're making but in reality there are other bottlenecks throughout their build that that really make these upgrades a little less effective. So what I mean by that is spending money in the wrong areas at the wrong time. So I'm all for upgrading your build. Once you get your build started, especially if you get a, get into your build for very little money, upgrading as you go is the number one beauty of DIY electric skateboards. Um, doing it yourself is just, it's awesome. Upgradability, yes. Anyways, so people who maybe go from a 6355 and upgrade to a 6374, but are still using that basic ESC. That's just not the upgrade I would recommend. I feel like Switching from the basic ESC to maybe a VESC that would unlock the full potential of a 6355 is a much better way to go. Same thing with people adding a second motor but still rocking the 6S2P battery. The 6S2P battery is awesome, a very good budget option. But when you start adding two motors or larger motors, you really should have at least a 3P battery, whether that's 6S3P or 10S3P or whatever. You wanna make sure that there's enough uh, amperage available in your battery to you know, to handle the current that those two motors are going to, to pull. So with a single motor, you can get away with pretty small batteries, but when you start adding two motors or larger motors, you really wanna make sure that your battery is capable of handling it. So at the end of the day, I feel like the best course of action as far as upgradability goes, is you should upgrade your battery first, and then your ESC, and then your motors. That way there are no bottlenecks. Um, if your battery can handle it, whatever your end goal is, if your battery can handle it, then you switch to an ESC that can handle it, then you get your motors where you, right where you want them. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, if you do upgrade out of order, it's not a big deal. Um, uh, most times you're still gonna get a great performance uh, boost, but you're just not gonna get that the best bang for your buck. And I you know we're all about trying to, to make our dollars go as far as possible. Again, that's why we're here in the DIY space. But anyways, so hopefully that helps upgrade in the proper order if you can. Um, so yeah. So personally, I've pretty much made all these mistakes so far, but one thing I can safely say that I haven't done yet and that I will never do is 
build on carpet. A lot of times we're getting pictures from people, whether it's from our customers or maybe it's one of you guys talking to me on Instagram. We get photos of people's builds that are not, that are in the build stages, they're, they're not quite done yet, they're not in their enclosures yet, but they're getting everything hooked up and they're sending us photos of everything on a carpet. And if you maybe are a PC builder or a electronic hobbyist, you kind of know where I'm going already. Um, carpets seem like a really safe place to build because they're soft, if you drop something on them, it, nothing's getting gonna get dinged or scratched or anything like that. But static electricity is definitely an issue with electronics. Now, a lot of modern day motherboards have a lot of um, safeties in place to prevent static shock from killing a motherboard. Um, a lot of these ESCs though are too small and, and are they just don't have those protections. So it is rare to kill your ESC with uh, static shock, but there's still a chance. So we should, be, we should be doing everything we can to prevent that. So please get your electronics off the carpet get onto something that, you know, is a nice work surface that's not going to shock your parts. Try to ground yourself while building, especially if you're gonna be handling your ESC. Um, again, many of you who built PCs or, or, or do a lot of electronics probably already know this, but again, I keep seeing it and I just wanna make sure that, just get your ESC off the carpet, please. Don't make me yell at you again. Just get them off the carpet. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so the last mistake that you guys definitely need to avoid is not applying Loctite to bolts that really need it. Not applying Loctite, I have some right here. Very cheap, it's at every single hardware store for very little money, so there's no excuse not to use it. Uh, pretty much Loctite, just make sure those bolts are really well fastened and they're not going to vibrate loose. Uh, the road vibrations of electric skateboards are insane. Uh, so the problem with that is what, as bolts loosen maybe in your motor mount, your motor mount can become loose and start dragging your motor on the ground, which is such a shame because these beautiful motors, the last thing you wanna do is scratch them all up. Um, but they also could totally fall off. I've seen people's motor mounts just fall right off their boards because they're just not adding some Loctite to their builds. Um, this will just save you a lot of money. This can be one of the most costly mistakes, especially it's like a couple bucks from the hardware store. It's not hard. Any bolt that's not fastened with a nylon nut or anti-vibration nut of some kind needs Loctite. So your regular skate hardware, your truck hardware, all that's good. Most of the bolts on a lot of the motor mounts nowadays have nylon nuts, but there's a few that don't. So that is what this is for. Definitely use it. I just, I can't stress that enough. If your motor mount falls off and you didn't use it, I have a hard time feeling bad <laughs> because now you know, especially if you watch this video. If you haven't watched this video before, we've all made mistakes. But now that you watch this video, if it happens now, I can't feel bad for you. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. If you guys have any more mistakes that maybe you've made in the past that I haven't mentioned here today, everybody makes different mistakes and finds mistakes in different ways. Uh, if you've made a mistake and cost you a bunch of money or something, drop it down in the, in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you've done in the past so I can avoid it myself and maybe anyone else who's reading can also avoid these uh, mistakes that other people have made. That's the beauty of sharing mistakes, saving someone else from the same one. So anyways, drop that in the comment section below. If you have any questions about anything or maybe a suggestion for a tutorial, put that in the comment section below. And if you're not subscribed already, please do. We have a lot of different electric skateboard content coming. We really wanna get uh, live streams going with live builds we wanna do soon as well. So please subscribe for that. And now uh, we will see you guys in the next one.